Welcome to the video. You're in for a wild ride here. I'm going to design a type process and build a Commodore 64 synthesizer in tandem. Yeah, this is a head wreck of a video. I hope you enjoy. Stick around to the end. You're going to hear the music made from this machine. You're going to see the images made from the process. Yeah, it's a wild ride. I'm sure I'm going to be guilty of some kind of crime for painting a Commodore 64 in this color. Yep. That has to be done. Welcome back to the channel. We're going back to the 1980s. We're going to do a mashup of Commodore 64 and Sinotype photography and make the Sino Door 64. What a terrible idea. But it's gonna be an interesting mashup. We're taking apart the Commodore 64, putting in a new sound chip, some jacks, some batteries, a screen, gonna make it portable, gonna photograph it, and make some photography. Old school, really old school. The Commodore 64 came out in 1982 and was in a marvel of the time because the sound chip known as the SID was an incredible piece of engineering and actually made a very good synthesizer and it's still recognized today as such an incredible feat. While the Sinotype process is much older, going back to 1842, invented by Sir John Herschel. I'm going to go through the process, we're going to prepare some paper and make some prints. So this is my setup here in my darkroom sink to prepare my papers for my Sinotype. But before I prepare, I need a negative. And this is basically a transparency that I have printed out on a laser printer. And it's quite large. It's it's an A3 size of the Commodore 64, AKA the Sinodor 64. And that's what I'm going to print today. I'm going to prepare my chemicals. Uh, yeah, these acetates, you can pretty much get them on Amazon. Links in the description, of course, uh, to help support the channel, costs you nothing. Uh, but these acetates are available in laser and inkjet and they're not interchangeable. So if you're going to print, make sure you get the right type of acetate. Um, so let's put that away. The original SID chip in the Commodore 64 was designed by Bob Yanis. I'm using an ARM2 SID chip, which basically is two chips emulated inside an ARM processor. A little bit technical, but it's really cool and it gives us this stereo sound. ARM to SID chip. There's two SIDs on this chip. It's a replacement for the original SID. The original SID was kind of damaged. This is made in Czech. Uh, these two pins here will go out for my other stereo output and I will solder in some audio cable onto this as well and then I will put those onto my jacks which are my jacks here which will go on the case and we've got our two chemicals here I'll okay, just put those in front here these are our A and B I've actually mixed these myself and you need some kind of dish I, I always use this one traditionally use this one and I use a hate brush pretty much and you need to be in a dark kind of dark uh, sublit and um, place to do your cyanotype so that's why it's a bit <laughs> not so bright on the camera so I'm going. that's pretty much it and of course that's the MIDI cart that goes the MIDI cart that goes into my cart slot and this last modification here where I take my power 5 volts plus ground onto the SD to ID. 
IEC connector. Basically, I can load my software up on SD cards instead of the tape. We use a tape, it's kind of an emulator for tape, but SD in a modern approach. I tend to put my negative, because this is a really large sheet. Okay, hang on here. So, I can actually do two of these negatives on this sheet. Uh, and the paper I'm using, and that's the paper I'm using, All right? This is Dollar and Rowney System 3 acrylic paper. It's a kind of, uh, it's a really good paper. I like to use it. It's acid free. It's available in A3. And I think this one is an A2. So I have an A2 size here. And the UV box that I will use, there's a video on that, how to make that box. Um, so I'm not going to go into that, but I'll link it up on the top corner and you can have a look at that too. Uh, then the top part, the Commodore 64. Oh, let's get that up here. We will probably put the potentiometers here so we can adjust things. And the back here will have our audio ports for left and right. And also we're going to have to do, at some point, figure out how to get composite, composite um, video out from this board so that we can plug it into some kind of screen. Uh, finally, yeah, it's a bit of a, it's quite a, quite a lot of a mod. Supposedly this board, this Commodore 64 board, can run off 5 volts. And that will be fun to do. I think, as far as I know, I need to set the firmware on this uh, ARM2SID to sid to tell which which chip to emulate. Because usually it detects by the, a voltage line uh, which chip to emulate. But I think you can set that and override it. And I need to set that so I can run this whole board at 5 volts. Meaning that I can run off a USB battery, which is fairly cool. And that's how I'm going to make a portable Commodore 64 synthesizer. Let's see how that works out. So a bit of soldering to do. Uh, my little diagram here for my CPU. I got to figure out which one of these chips is the CPU. So there you go. So you will get two A three size sheets on an A2 size paper. Uh, for our American friends, that would be A2 is 23 and half inches by 16 and a half inches. And an A3 size sheet is 16 and a half by 11 and a half, roughly. So they're quite large uh, negatives. So the, you need quite a large printer to print out an acetate like these. Uh, you don't need the best printer in the world. Some people go overboard with, with that. Uh, any inkjet that's capable of printing a photo is capable of printing a cyanotype negative. Okay, I'm going to get started and put my, my A and B together and get going. Um, I should have a glass rod. I like to use a glass rod to mix up. audio um, outputs for left and right, my jacks, my decoupling capacitors here, and they are soldered in here on it with a shielded wire. And they'll also go up on the top of the case here. And I soldered in my two pins over here to the CPU. Yeah, it's not for the faint hearted this mod, but it's quite a lot of fun. Let's hope it works. Uh, alternative uh, photography chemicals, always use something like a glass rod never metal uh, because metal will if you got anything will affect with silver in this case it doesn't really matter but if you're doing Van Dyke brown or salt paper prints glass red 
is essential. And by the way, those negatives that you make uh, with your inkjet or your laser will work with salt paper, will work with uh, Van Dyke Brown. Okay, we can go into negative density uh, too, but for just to get you up and running, you can you can do, use those negatives and all those processes. And there's other processes we could talk about. But for today, we're doing Cyanotype. So. Keyboard was made in Japan. Don't make anything in Japan these days. Hmm. Let's see what we can do with that at some point. So for the component or the composite video out, I took the board off off the case, unscrewed it, and I've soldered in here. There's, let me just point it out. Yeah, that here, it will be the video out, and that's ground, and it's just on a shield cable, and we'll put that somewhere on the case with a with a socket so we can plug our screen into it. So I know this is kind of a mad video of a mashup between Commodore and and Cyanotype traditional prints. I just thought it'd be fun to do because it's going to be Cyanot it's Cyanotype World Day and yeah um, I didn't want to be a stickler for convention. <laughs> So once the paper is dried, I put the negative together, put it into my UV box. Now that UV box that I've made, I have a video on that, so you can watch that on how to make your own. So after about five minutes, um, I come back, open the box, take out the print. Uh, I'm doing this under a kind of a very, uh, not such a bright condition, so that's kind of important and I wash it in my darkroom sink. I'm washing it in water here. You don't have to have a darkroom to actually do a Cyanotype. Um, it does take a good 10 minutes to wash your print. You can wash it in just running water. It doesn't need to be any kind of special water. Uh, and it's pretty safe to use your own hands. You don't need to wear gloves, but if you feel that you're a bit sensitive, sure, put on a pair of gloves. And as you see, after a good 10 minutes, it starts to come together, but it needs a good wash. Bye.